Hello, in this video we're going to look at the Cauchy product between two infinite series. And it's actually a pretty good topic, meaning that you should have this in your mathematical tool bag. Um, so my quick and dirty interpretation of a Cauchy product, so a Cauchy product of two series, AN, and it goes from zero to infinity, and BN goes from zero to infinity, it's a specific way to think about the answer. Now, could that be more vague? Of course it couldn't. <laughs> but let me let me show you what I mean. So th this is the definition of a Cauchy, Cauchy product. We have the product of two infinite series, and it equals this infinite series. Now, these numbers are represented like this. It's the sum from k equals 0 to n, of AK times BN minus K. Okay. And all this will make sense in a second. But this is the true definition of Cauchy product. But and then you'll see what I mean by it's just really thinking about it in a unique or specific way. So and, and we'll illustrate that with the example. So we have two infinite series and so this one can be represented like this and this one represented like that. Now, to do this um, product, you know, you take this times each one of these terms, take the next one times each one of these terms, take the next one times each, and you do that. And that's how you multiply um, these series together. But according to the Cauchy definition, this can be represented by C, you know, C0, C1, C2, C3, etc. And then generically that's written as just the sum of the CNs. Okay. So let's look at an illustration. Okay. So for this, first, ignore the dashed lines and the Cs. Okay. So when we multiply this A0 times B0, that's this term. A0 times B1, A0 times B2, A0 times B3, etc. Then you go to the next term, A1 times B0, A1 times B1, and you keep going. And then you go to the next term, A2, A3, and if we were to add up all these terms, that's this answer, okay? But the way the Cauchy product thinks about this is... The, so we think backwards diagonal, and and I must admit that I read that uh, off of someone's website, and I um, it just seemed so intuitive that I kept it. I actually don't know if it's a if a true mathematical term or not. And uh, so think about a backwards diagonal and keeping the sum of the subscripts constant. Okay, so so C zero means we want it we want all the terms where the two subscripts add to zero and there's only one term now c1 are all all terms where the subscripts add to one so zero plus one is one so this is in the c1 term and this and it's actually you can tell it's just an up diagonal so there's only two terms so z0 represents this term. C1 is actually the addition of these two terms. C2 is the addition of these two terms. C3 is the addition of these two terms. And so that's what it means like the backwards diagonal. When you look at a diagonal of a matrix, it goes like this. So it goes like this. So C0 is A0, B0. So it's the sum from k equals 0 to 0 of a k times b sub 0 minus k. And, and actually, they're all defined that way. So c1 is this, you know, so it goes from 0 to 1. c2 goes from 0 to 2. So there's three terms, and if you think about it as this diagonal, uh, cn is the sum from 0 to n of these two terms. And notice that you have k plus n minus k, when you add those, you get n, which is that subscript. Now, what the theorem we're going to prove on the back page, I want to give you uh, intuition of what we're doing. So if we look at, at the sum from C0 to C3, 
That means we're adding up all these terms, right? But isn't that equivalent to if we add them this way? Right? That's the same. And actually, that's the theorem that says if we take the, the partial sum of the C's, and then, you know, normally you'd add them like this, but it's equivalent to adding them like this. So, and that'll make more sense on the back page. But one other note that I think is so powerful for the Cauchy product is when you're multiplying the product of two power series, say, you know, A0 times AN times, you know, BN times XN, that this product can be thought of like this, where the, the coefficient in front of the XN term is the CN term of a Cauchy product, which is this. And that, I think, has helped me in some of the theoretical stuff I do in multiplying two power series. Okay, so this is the theorem that we wanted to prove. That if we have two series, we let CN be the Cauchy product. We let B, capital BN, be the partial sum of BN. Then the sum of our Cauchy product coefficients can be thought of as like this. And so really this is going, remember in our illustration that the Cauchy product went diagonally, but this is actually going across and, or, or actually down in my illustration back there. And so this is just adding it a different way and we're gonna prove that. And so then this can be thought of as the sum from zero to that, which is actually the partial sum of our series B. We prove it by induction, so let n equal zero. C zero is this, which is a zero, b zero, which is a zero partial sum of, of zero, of the b's. Okay, so that, that's kind of trivially true, but now let's assume it's true for j and show that it's also true for j plus one. So we assume it's true, so then the partial sum of the cn's to j is equal to this. If we look at Cn, you know, to j plus 1, that we can split that term into this, because that's just the, the j plus 1 term. And then by definition, this is equal to this. And that is, you know, the Cauchy product. But here we have a sum, you know, we have from 0 to j and ak, 0 to, you know, j and j plus 1, but if we take out that top one and set it aside, then we can combine these, and that's what I do here. So it's a sum from 0 to j, and the a, k we factor out, and then these come down, and then that is this term. So what's left is this, but really, um, if, if you look at this sum, by the time we get to the j plus 1 term, in this sum, it's actually only one term. And so we could actually just add that and call it the sum from zero to j plus one. And then this is the partial sum of the b's. So it is true and we're finished. And so one way to think about this is, is if we look at on the back example, that um, as you go down, you know, you're, you, you, you know, there's four terms, then three, then two, then one. And so what we did was added everything here, but that J plus one term was the only one left. So really adding it in, you know, it didn't affect the sum, and we just called it uh, J plus one. Well, anyway, that's all I have for today. Hopefully you enjoyed that. I sure did. Please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.